Hi, this is Karen again. We're on lesson 12 of our series on the court, on learning chords. And hopefully um, you've had quite a bit of time now to study the major, minor, diminished, and augmented chords. And um, a little bit about the number chords that we talked about. So the, the, la the, the last two videos that we're going to do are, um, the first one is, this one actually, is, is based on the circle. And the, the last one we'll talk about ninth chords and eleventh chords and suspended chords and just finish it up. So we have two more lessons, this one and one more. And I'm, I'm really happy that you're following along with me and hopefully you're just replaying them over and over and over and using the book um, to, to just kind of set in all of the information that you need to know. There's not that much uh, information. So I hope you have your little cards. Um, that you've downloaded. Some people have asked me, well, how come they're not printing? Um, all you have to do is download it into a, a file and put it on your desktop and then hit print and it will print. But if you don't download it, you can't just click on it and have it print. So uh, put this little card on your uh, piano and everything that we've talked about is pretty much summarized right there. So if you go to uh, musicinnewcastle.com or sacramentomusicgroup.com uh, the Sacramento Music Group one actually you can you can find the downloaded PDF files for that okay so uh, the other thing you should download if you haven't gotten my book recently or ordered my book um, since we started this series I've started adding this circle it's laminated um, to the package when you buy the book and the DVD but if you didn't uh, if you bought it earlier and didn't get this you can download this also as a PDF file and then you can uh, have it uh, for your own. So what you do is you cut it out and you just get a little grommet and cut out the little arrow, the three arrows, uh, the set, and it'll look like this when you're done. So we're gonna be using this now this whole entire lesson. So uh, get out all your materials and follow along and I think you're gonna really enjoy this. It's, it's really uh, just very revealing as far as how chords work in a very simple way. Okay, let's get started. We're going to start on page 29 in the book and I would like you to have your circle ready because we're going to use it. Uh, so whether you leave it on the card, I would rather you cut it out of the card because I want you to be able to turn it uh, like this. If you just leave it on a card, it's really kind of not as easy to understand what's going on on the bottom part of the circle. So, you know, I, it took me a long time to, I learned the chords pretty easily up to page 28. You can, you can probably survive forever without doing this next lesson. But if we do this next lesson, it's going to make the chords make more sense to you. And when you practice them, you're actually going to be practice them in progression instead of one at a time. It's kind of the downside of using a chord chart. When you use a chord chart, and, and just just for reference reasons I put a chord chart in the book um, it's in the back somewhere right here and you're gonna notice on page 40 you can learn the chords this way the problem is you gotta memorize them uh, there's really no rhyme or reason to understand why you're doing what you're doing and that's what most of the comments that I get now are uh, they're just based on that um, I, you know, I learned a few chords and I, I did fine on a few songs, but I never went any further. So now I think this next lesson is going to kind of set seed it for you, just make it more understandable, and and you're going to go, oh. So hopefully the light bulb will come on and you'll be able to really enjoy um, hearing where the chords go. It's called a progression. They. You don't learn just one chord at a time, and there's a very few, very very few um, songs that have only. There aren't any that have only one chord, um, but there's a lot of them that have only two chords. Uh, Achy breaky heart, the first part of it, only has C and G chord if you play it in the key of C. But there's a lot of songs that have three chords, and I call page 29 chords in sets of threes. If you learn this one page right here and you really get the ability to learn the one, four, five chords, um, I think you're going to find that you'll be able to hear and, and later on even transpose songs 
um, just because you know how the circle works. All right, so chords always work in progression. The circle puts the chords in logical order. Approach the circle of chords like a clock. There is one chord for each time slot. Note, the right side of the circle is flat keys and the left side of the circle is, is sharp keys. And there's a typo right there. You might want to make a note of that if you have it in a book. And thank you for letting me know that. Uh, some of you um, actually wrote to me and told me that. So the left side of the circle is sharp keys. Okay, so we'll fix that on our next printing. Okay, so if you start, I put over on this side the, the way we play the circle and you, uh, the way we play the chords inverted so we don't have to jump all over. So what we're going to do first, it says practice. Play the chords around the circle to the right and then play the chords around the circle to the left. So if you take out your little circle and you look at it, I, I put this little three arrow uh, center on here so it'll just highlight the three chords for you. And we've typed in the inversion that we want you to play the chords in. So I'm, the first set I'm going to learn is the C set. That's the key of C. If you move to the right on the circle, this is called the circle of fourths. Fourths meaning C to F is a four, fourth, F to B flat is a fourth. So it's four notes apart. Remember, two notes up, two notes down is a fourth. Okay? F to B flat is a fourth. B flat to E flat is a fourth. Circle of fifths if you move to the left. C to G is fifth. Okay? So most circles that you're going to find in most theory books are reversed. You'll see the G over here and the F over here. I spent years trying to figure it out that way. It never really worked for me. This one works for me. So if you'd rather use the other one, this, the same principle holds true. It's just turned around the other way. Okay? So, C chord, if it goes to F chord. Now remember, I think uh, in the, the Play By Ear series, I told you this little story. Um, if, if in college they call it the tonic goes to the subdominant, goes to the dominant. Now, that doesn't really, who cares? But, if the C chord goes to the F chord, the F chord usually goes back to C. If C chord goes to G, which is usually a seventh, which we'll talk to about in a few minutes, it almost always goes back to C. So in our class, we made up this stupid little story, and you'll hear it on the, on the uh, if you watch the video that comes with the book. C is home, F is the wife, and G is the husband. Okay? If C, C is called the, the tonic, or the tone on which the song is based, and usually it's the first chord of the song and the last chord of the song. So if, if someone says to you, what key is this song in? Or what scale did the composer use to write the song? All you have to usually do is look at the first and the last chord. And that's usually the key, the name of the key also, which is a great trick uh, to impress someone because uh, you don't have to look at all the sharps and flats and know the scales and all of that. So C is home. F is the wife. If the wife leaves home, most of the time she can find her way back. So probably 80% of the time if C chord is followed by an F chord, the next chord will be C. Sometimes the wife gets confused, can't find her way home, and, and this is a ridiculous story, but it'll help. C chord goes to F. F. The wife has to go get the husband, and then they both go home. They get a GPS, I guess. If C chord is the first chord of the song and the second chord is G and usually G7, 95% of the time the chord goes back to C. So if the first chord is C and the second chord is G, the third chord will almost always be C. So there's a cheer in high school um, that I learned. It's uh, lean to the left, lean to the right, stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. So if C chord goes to the left, it has to come back to the center. If F chord goes to the right, it has to come back to the center. So just kind of think like that, and that's what page 29 in the book is. You're going to play a C chord, an F chord, 
a C chord, a G chord, and a C. And this is called the blues, by the way. The blues in B flat is, is the most common, probably for wind instruments and jazz bands. So the, the, you, you almost always go to the right first. C, F, C, G, C. Now, if I turn the circle and I put F at 12 o'clock, let me get back here in the center, it will go F, B flat, F, C, F. All right? If I put D at the top, and I get back here in the center, D, G, D, A, D. So that's how I want you to practice. You start, and, and if let's do it this way. People go, well, that's a lot to learn. Well, learn one set a week. And in 12 weeks, you'll know all of them. So don't try to learn the whole circle in one day. It's just, it won't, it won't work for you. Just sit down and play one step of the clock each day or each week until you know them all. The hardest ones are down here. And they're the ones you, you play probably the least often. The ones you'll play the most often are um, up to B flat and over to E, straight across here and these, these in here. These, these very rare, you won't, you probably, if you don't want to bother with them, uh, don't. But it's really fun and it's a, it's a great challenge and it's really kind of fun to play, especially if you're playing on a portable keyboard, which um, after lesson 13, we're going to put up a video on how to use your portable keyboard to practice and how to make it a little more fun and less boring. Um, on a piano, kind of boring, but um, whatever. Okay, so let's start. And let's start with a C chord. All right, so we, we got our little circle and we're gonna go, in fact, let me, let me put the circle. Can you see that right there? Yes, you can. All right, so let's put the, C, the circle at 12 o'clock. All right, and I'm gonna play a C chord and an F chord and a C chord and a G. Doesn't that sound nice? C, F, C, G. Pretty soon when, you, when you're playing it, you'll start to hear songs. So let's just do an octave with our left hand. And I'm just gonna play the C chord with my right hand. the chords and sets of threes. Now let's say someone says, can you play it in the key of F? Sure I can. You put the F at 12 o'clock and you start with an F chord. F. Oh, C. Excuse me. F. B flat. F. C. And you just turn the little arrow to F and it'll tell you what three chords to use. So your first assignment is to work your way all the way around the circle. So if I gave you a test and I said, all right, play the three chords in the key of D, okay, then you're gonna put the D at 12 o'clock and you're gonna play a G, D, or D, G, D, A, D. And it's that simple. So I want you to take the circle, you can download it um, off of sacramentomusicgroup.com and uh, Make sure that you put it into a file because you can't print it just, just by clicking on it. And um, print it up. I just got a little, I wouldn't, you can take it to any, any uh, print shop and have it laminated if you want. Um, I just bought a little laminating machine uh, for $20 at Walmart and it's made by um, Scotch. And you can laminate all of your stuff that you want to use and keep, okay? All right, so that's page 29. That's called Practice Chords Around the Circle. All right, the next page, is says, this is, this is this, what I just talked about written out. It has every one of the sets all written out, and I don't think we have to go through that because we just did. All right, so here's um, another practice sheet. Chords going to the left and chords going to the right. 
So you can just practice them inverted. If you like to play them in another inversion, fine. I don't really care. Um, it doesn't matter, uh, depending on what, so, what mel where your melody is going. I would like you all, though, to, to learn to practice the chords with both hands. So if you're going to practice, practice, just sit there and go. I think the person that wrote, uh, Oh, Come All Ye Faithful, chords that day and came up with that. Um, the guy that wrote In the Mood. C chord. F. C. G. C. See, so a lot of songs were written with just three chords. And now if you want to play them in another key, use the same pattern and just turn the circle to whatever key you want to play. And we'll talk about that in another series. All right, on page 32, now it's kind of nice to know which way the chords go if you have minor, diminished, augmented, and the numbered chords. Where, where do they go? And how, how can you substitute one chord for another uh, later on as you get more advanced? Page 32, minor chords usually move to the left on the circle. Practice the chords listed below, move to the left and listen. So if you look at page 32 closely, you'll see C, and to make a C major chord, a C minor chord, right in the insert there, you flat the E in the C chord and it moves to a G. You play the G chord, you flat the B flat, and it moves to D. And it works all the way around the circle, all right? So we're going to play a C chord, C minor. Now, if you listen, can you hear where it should resolve? Listen. Okay, you know what I hear when I practice this? Ain't she sweet? Say you're walking down the street. Well, that, that isn't how it goes. But you start to hear things and you go, wow. The guy that wrote 2001 A Space Odyssey. C major, C minor. <laughs> okay, so you can, you can actually work all the way around the circle. Now watch what happens with these minor chords. Minor chords are kind of depressing. That is not a happy chord. Okay, so as you work your way to the left on the circle, C major, C major, C minor. Goes to G major, G minor, D major, minor. Notice how my hand is just moving right down that keyboard. Oh, B. It's, it's just going to take me straight down the keyboard. So minor chords are depressing. Depressed means go down. So minor chords, usually you'll hear an F chord, F minor, See, see how they just kind of melt into each other. All right, that's minors. Then try diminished. Diminished is just a minor chord on steroids. It's more depressing than a minor chord. So it works the same. Diminished chords usually move to the left on the circle. Practice the chords and move. So now you can see that the C chord, remember for diminished, you flat everything except the C? Alright, so you're going to play a C chord, flat, leave the C alone, and flat everything else. Okay, and there, and then it goes to G. Now, in one of my other books, I, there's a chord progression that you hear a lot. It goes... You can use a D minor chord in, before you get to G. So you can go, let me get this circle out. You can go C, C diminished, D minor, G7, back to C. And that's a later lesson. So you, you hear that a lot. Nice filler for a song. Okay, so that's how diminished chords work. Augmented chords, 
I love the augmented cords and I'll teach you something that's really cool in just a minute. Augmented cords usually move to the right on the circle. Practice the chord listed below and move to the right and listen. So an augmented chord, if you play a C chord, and to play a C augmented, you sharp the fifth, right? Remember how you, how you make augmented? Well, an easy way to know which note to sharp, it's right there. Play a C chord and sharp the G note and move to an F chord. Play an F chord, sharp the C note, and move to a B flat chord. It's, it's very cool. So you play a C chord, augmented. Now, can you hear the next chord? Listen. All right, so you're gonna notice when I augment something, I raise it or I add to it. Augmented chords are gonna move me right up the keyboard. Okay, augment, F, It takes me right straight up the keyboard. So augmented chords move to the right. All right, now the next page is very cool. Dominant seventh chords. Remember we talked about where the seventh is? You play the chord, you find the name of the chord, you add the note a whole step to the left of the root or the name of the chord. So you're playing four notes, okay? Seventh chords work exactly like augmented chords. C chord, C7 chord always goes to F. F7 goes to B flat. See? So, now you're probably going, wow! Oh, Page 34 and page 35, they, they work the same. So if, you're, if you've played chords for a while, if you have a G7 chord, put a G augmented chord in its place and, and listen to what happens. Okay, so that's a, that's a G7 right here. Hear it? Okay, if I put augmented, See, it gives you the same effect and it goes to C. Now here's a C7. Okay, here's a C augmented. Okay, you can, sometimes it works, some, that time it didn't sound quite as good, but if you want to work on chord substitutions, that's a great place to start. Um, so that's called the seventh chords around the circle. So you're just gonna go C chord, C7, F chord, teachers gave me a really good hint. If you want to kind of stretch your chords out a little bit, don't play four notes at the same time. When you, when you see a G7, play the G chord first, add the seventh, and then move on. Okay, so that's kind of a nice filler. Instead of, if you don't want to sound like a beginner anymore, just play. the seventh. See, it just adds more color and makes the sound, the song sound fuller. I, I use food as an example a lot, so I call that hamburger helper. You, you kind of just are filling in all those long spaces when you're a beginner, when you have a G7 chord that lasts for five or six measures, kind of break it up a little bit and add the seventh later. Okay, so that's page 35. The last page is called Numbered Chords Around the Circle. So this is, this is a great one to learn the major seventh, the sevenths, and the sixes. You just play the chord, and it says, and now we're gonna move to the right. It says start with a C and move to the right on the circle. Play the chord, then add the numbered chord notes one at a time. All right, so you're gonna play a C chord, and inside this little insert here are a bunch of little triangles with the three notes that you're gonna add before you move on. So it's C, B, B flat, A. Okay? Then it's F. Then you're going to add E, E flat, D. Then you're going to move to a B flat chord. Then you're going to add A, A flat, G. 
So basically all you're doing is playing the chord, find the root, and you're going to walk back three half steps. Okay, then F chord. Find the F, add the note, B flat. Now, remember you can you can end a song on a major seventh and a sixth. You cannot end a song on a dominant seventh. And that's the dominant seventh is the most common chord. If it just says C7, that's just a plain old seventh chord, and you're going to see that more than any of the other two. So if you're playing a C chord and, a, and you're playing a C6, see, I can end a song on that. It's a nice ending. A major seventh. I can end a song there too. But a seventh chord, I cannot. Seventh chord, you'll never see a C7 at the end of a song. It has to go somewhere. You'll see it at the beginning of a song uh, in a pickup measure, but it has to resolve. So a lot of times you'll see a, G, uh, a G7 chord. It'll be in the pickup measure and it'll lead you right to the C chord, which is the, the main chord in the song. So G7 goes to C. Alright, so this week, maybe the next many weeks, you're just going to work with this circle and just sit there and go, okay, the first most important thing is just to make your way around it. So you start with C, and I like to do this octave thing on a piano. It, it gives me a little rhythm. If you're playing on a keyboard, put on a bossa nova rhythm with your accompaniment button and just sit there and hold it. And, and just get with the rhythms and just have some fun while you learn th what the rhythms on your keyboard sound like. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a few weeks, okay? So you're gonna go, just play four, two with your left hand and four with your right hand. left hand's going off the grid, but I'm just playing octaves down there. Isn't that cool? I think you're going to find this circle is the best way I know to learn circles, I mean, to learn chords. So just enjoy playing them, and pretty soon you're going to be able to sit down at the piano and just make things up. So just start with C. that up. So I'm just goofing around practicing and pretty soon and that's how songs get written. People are, are using chord progressions and they just sit down and just start a melody comes to their head. All right so give it a try and then uh, we'll carry on. Now what I'd like to show you is there's two more books that will follow this. So much to learn and not enough uh, years left to learn them. All the little things that I'm referring to that you'll learn later are in this book. I did a lot of uh, workshops on chord progressions and exercises and what chord goes with that note. Um, chords around the circle is mentioned in here again, but chord progressions, open two note chords. Uh, there's some riffs in here for playing the blues, cheaty blues, which I love, uh, is really a lot of fun. And uh, chord practice sheets are in here, basic blues. Um, and all kinds of really, I call it Ricano chord. And then I have another book that I wrote that's every workshop, um, all my favorite workshops that I've done. Uh, lots of things in here that just add to what we've already, what we've said here. So what we've done now is we've just kind of laid the foundation for the chords and the rest is kind of up to you. Just go through the book one page at a time. You can't get this in 13 weeks. It's just not gonna happen. So take your time. Enjoy where you're at on the way to where you're going. I hope you enjoyed our section on uh, the circle. If you'd like to get into the circle in more detail, uh, go on my website, uh, sacramentomusicgroup.com, 
and you can order my DVD on uh, the series that I did in a group uh, on the circle. Um, it's a, a little more detail than what we did today and uh, so if you're curious about uh, a little more advanced things then that that video will interest you. Um, so today's lesson we've covered pages 29 to 31 in the emergency cord book. So if you're watching this video for the first time you might want to go back and start at number one and then go on our website and order this book. You can also friend us up on, on Facebook um, and uh, just keep in touch with me. The videos that go with this book were done in a group. Uh, they're different than these videos. Um, I did them originally with my group class, which is really fun. We laughed a lot. We had a lot of fun. So you get the book and the DVDs together when you order them, along with the circle. All right, we'll see you again next, next lesson.